What's going on guys, Jerry Neutron here back with a brand new video and today we're doing an actual PC build. So I ended up getting my hands on an FX 8370 from AMD and I decided why not take one last look at the FX series just before the launch of Ryzen. So today what we're going to do is throw that processor into a build, run some benchmarks and then hopefully get some baseline numbers for when Ryzen comes out. Uh, I'm planning on getting my hands on one of those chips as well. So I'm going to benchmark that against this system and hopefully give you guys an idea of what kind of gains you can expect by upgrading to the new platform. So let's take a look at what I got. All right, guys. So the first thing in the build I have here is the uh, FX 8370. This was provided to me by AMD. Uh, they went ahead and sent me the one that has the Wraith cooler as well, which actually looks pretty nice. I kind of wish I could use it for uh, like an HTPC build or something like that. It's actually not a bad looking little uh, CPU cooler. So we're going to be using this as our uh, CPU. And then back here, I've got the motherboard from ASUS. Uh, this is an M5A97 R2.0. It's not a very high end motherboard. I kind of didn't want to invest that much into this platform since Ryzen is just around the corner. So I bought this kind of just to get the job done, but normally I would recommend going for a, uh, different, pro uh, a different motherboard. And aside from that, the uh, rest of the system is composed of basically my second PC. So that gets everything that uh, is kind of left over from the uh, parts that I don't use for my main PC. So it's got eight gigabytes of RAM, an R9 290X, uh, an 850 watt power supply, and uh, an SSD and some uh, random hard drives. So we'll be uh, basically combining these two things with that uh, system that is kind of already uh, operational. And uh, we're gonna run some benchmarks and see what the performance is like. All right, guys, so here she is. You can see it all put together here now. I'm running a uh, Silent Base 600 for the uh, case. We got an XFX uh, power supply. Again, that is 850 watts. Um, you can see my drives there and my SSD. Mainly just put uh, media on that. And then you can see the uh, Wraith cooler there. It actually looks pretty decent. Uh, not bad at all for a stock cooler. Now you can see my R9 290X, which I did powder coat. That thing is a dust magnet. I'm probably gonna remove the uh, Plasti Dip. Did I say powder coat? I Plasti Dipped it. And uh, yeah, it just attracts all kind of crap. Try to ignore that, but uh, otherwise the system looks pretty good here. So I think it is, uh, about time to run some benchmarks. Actually, hold on guys, one second. Uh, change of plans. Instead of running the R9 290X, I'm actually gonna swap that out for my GTX 1070 from ASUS. I wanna make sure I'm properly uh, stretching the legs of the CPU during these benchmarks. So rather than just overclock my 290X and get like 970 or uh, R9 390 performance, I decided to just go ahead and swap in a better graphics card altogether. So we'll be using the GTX 1070 during these benchmarks. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the Wraith cooler as well and use this Reven cooler from, uh, I'm sorry, use this CPU cooler from Reven, which I have uh, installed a Noctua industrial fan on. Anyway, the reason I'm swapping out the CPU cooler is, uh, although the uh, Wraith cooler was not bad, the temps were not where I wanted them to be. And I think it was mainly because of the motherboard. This motherboard uses a four plus two phase power design, which I knew going in, but I didn't want to invest a ton into this platform since 
uh, Ryzen is just around the corner. I noticed that when this board is, uh, or when the CPU rather, is uh, trying to hit its turbo clock at 4.3 gigahertz, the uh, motherboard is commanding 1.425 volts. So that is kind of the reason why I believe the temps are not where they should be. So uh, I did notice that it's actually only hitting 1.416, but still, I'm pretty sure I could get the uh, core voltage lower than that. But here's the thing. Whenever I try to go into the BIOS and enable uh, LLC after I'm doing, or while I'm doing my manual overclocks, the uh, system will lock up and freeze every time I try to go into Windows. So I can't really set a uh, manual overclock with this motherboard, which kind of sucks, but it does drive one point home and that is buy an appropriate motherboard for your setup and don't cheap out on it. So. <laughs> Not really much I can do about it at this point, but uh, we're just gonna go ahead and slap a better cooler on there, run everything uh, and in the uh, stock configuration and uh, go from there. All right guys, so for the benchmarks, I just wanna let you know that all tests were done three times and then an average score was calculated. Also for the gaming benchmarks, they were run at a high or very high preset with uh, by4 MSAA and also run at 1080p resolution to make sure the GPU was not a limiting factor in the results. So let's just go ahead and start with the uh, CPU bound test first. Uh, the first one up is Cinebench. This particular test uses all of your uh, CPU cores to render a photorealistic 3D scene. So in this case, I got an average score of 634, which is, eh, it's all right, it's not too bad, but uh, yeah. Then next up I use RealBench to perform these two benchmarks. The first one is the GIMP image editing. This is use your CPU to kind of uh, simulate a photo editing process. So it'll open several photos, add some various filters to them, and then calculate how long it took to complete that process. So in this case, it took an average time of 45.70 seconds. I also use the H.264 video compression benchmark in RealBench, which uses Handbrake to encode a video file. This is a CPU bound test as well, and that took an average time of 79.24 seconds. Now, moving on to the gaming benchmarks, we are starting with Battlefield 1, which is actually a pretty CPU intensive game. I saw 70% usage pretty much the entire time I was playing the game. But anyways, as far as frame rates go, we had a minimum frame rate of 91.33 and an average frame rate of 100.88. So not too bad there, despite being definitely a CPU hog. Then we moved on to Doom, which I was using the Vulkan API. And in that I had a minimum frame rate of 99.91 and an average frame rate of 162.22. Uh, just for fun, I did happen to capture a uh, log of the frame times, which I've graphed here. I probably didn't need to do all three runs, but whatever, I got excited. But as you can see, this game is smooth as butter. You rarely have any uh, dips at all. It pretty much stays above 100 FPS the entire time. So pretty nice experience there. I can't quite say the same for the next game that we benchmarked here, which is Forza Motorsport 6 Apex. This is using the DirectX 12 API. In this case, we had a minimum frame rate of 15.06 and an average frame rate of 70.59. Now I did happen to capture uh, frame times here as well of all three runs. Uh, as you guys can see, there were some pretty big drops during this game and this occurred mostly uh, in high traffic areas and also when going through puddles since the uh, track that I'm using it is uh, raining on that track. So um, that's kind of expected for this game, but I would like to see maybe uh, minimum frame rates a little bit higher in this case. But uh, yeah. From there we moved on to Grand Theft Auto V, another CPU intensive game. In this case we had minimum frame rates of 33.67 and average frame rates of 83.40. And then the last game that I benchmarked was Witcher 3. Uh, this game had minimum frame rates of 92 and average frame rates of 101.11. Now one thing I did notice that didn't really show up in my benchmarks is that whenever I would uh, 360 around Geralt or Geralt and uh, Roach, 
I would see a lot of uh, frame dips and I'm not quite sure why that would occur. It didn't really seem to happen if I was just going through my uh, actual benchmark route, but whenever I would start just kind of looking around the area with the mouse, I definitely saw some frame dips. So I'm not sure if that's going to be the fault of the CPU or if that was something uh, that was apparent in the game itself. It's been a while since I can't remember if uh, I experienced that with my 4790K. But uh, anyway, that's about it as far as the benchmarks go. So hopefully this will give us a baseline for when the Ryzen CPUs come out. I'm definitely gonna get my hands on one of those chips. I don't know which one yet, but when I do, I'm going to revisit this, these benchmarks. We're gonna compare them and see uh, what kind of gains we are getting. I know it's not going to be an apples to apples comparison. I'm looking at this more on the uh, platform level rather than the specific CPUs. So anyway guys, that's it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe. I forgot what else I was going to say, but uh, yeah, <laughs> see ya.